Hello, this is Pastor Dave from Harvest Christian Ministries International. We are so excited that you decided to join us on our YouTube channel. We ask that you would give us a thumbs up, that you would share, that you would like, and that you would also subscribe. And remember, please hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every single time that we upload our videos. We ask that this ministry is being a blessing to you, that you will partner with us financially so that we can continue to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you soon, and remember that the harvest is truly right. The vision of Harvest Christian Ministries International. Harvest Christian Ministries International is a place where the Lord of the Harvest has called us to gather souls for the kingdom of God. Our goals are to equip laborers in the vineyard of the Lord by preaching and teaching the word of God, healing the sick, and ministering to the needs of others. We are a mature, supernatural body of believers, full of the Godhead bodily. We believe we have received our end-time harvest now of all that God has sown for us from the beginning of the foundation of the world. This is our season, this is our time. For the harvest is truly ripe. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come before the people of God. We thank you, Lord God, that anniversaries, that birthdays, that celebrations are so very important to you. And if it's important to you, Lord God, it's important to us. So, Father, we, we come today on this fifth day of December, 2021, to just acknowledge the things that you've done in our lives, God. Despite this COVID, this whiteness, sickness, this disease that's in the earth, we still want to praise you, Father. We thank you for keeping us by your keeping power, Lord. Now, Father, we ask, Lord, you watch over those who are on the way here, Lord God, that you would saturate this place, God. Saturate this sanctuary. We, we convert this place into your sanctuary, a place where we can call upon your name and where we will hear from heaven. Now, Lord God, we pray that you would open our eyes that we may see today, open our ears that we may hear today. Give us a heart to understand that we believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today. Father, we know that your anointing is in this place, that healing is in this place, deliverance is in this place, God. And so, Father God, we set the atmosphere, we set the stage for the glory. to be able to do here at Harvest Christian Ministries International is to be able to encourage you in your giving. And I think it's very important that to learn why it's important to give according to the word of God. Amen. 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 So if you're willing to give today, our text to give number is 844-970-4996 as many of you already know, and as well as cash app at dollar time A-C-M-I L-I-F-E. And if you have your Bibles, I have you to open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 17 through 19. 
Glory to God. Before you commence, the scriptures are on the screens for you. And the scripture says that as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. The storm of treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future. Somebody say future. future. So that they may take hold of that which is true life. Glory to God. And so the word can tell us not for us not to be high-minded as it relates to your, your finances. And somebody say that, that somebody say this with me, that God's an investor. God. That, that is so true. That God, God, he's an investor. And it's with any investor is always looking for a return on their investment. And so what God is doing in your life is that he's making an investment in you. And so that investment that he makes is that he gives you resources. Amen. Now, you know, some people say, well, you know, um, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I would charge you to go back and read the scripture. The scripture says that it is the, the love of money or the inappropriate relationship with money is the root of all evil. So God has no issue with you having resources. God has no issue with you having finances. And so the scripture says that we're to not set our hopes on the uncertainty of the riches, but we're to put our hope and our certainty in God. And what he does, he gives us everything richly to enjoy. That we are to do good and to be rich in good works. And the way we're rich in good works is through our faith. In our faith and our giving. And then the scripture says to be generous. Somebody say generous. Generous. Generous and ready. Ready to share the storing of treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future. You know, the future aspect of your giving, I want you to think about this. It doesn't matter if you're giving to Harvest Christian Ministries International. It doesn't matter if you're giving to your ministry, if you're tithing and you're giving offering there. But I want you to understand something. You're adding to your crown. What do you mean, Pastor Dave? Well, you, you may not have gotten someone born again yesterday. You, you, it might have been a few months. It might have been years since you've gotten someone born again. But I'm here to encourage you today that when you give to the kingdom of God, you're doing kingdom business. Kingdom business is when you're giving to ministry and you're giving of your substance, that you're giving back to God what he has given unto you. And so when the roll is called, in that day in glory, when God begins to call the role of those who have made it into the kingdom, you may not have won souls any time in, the, in their recent history, but when they see the account of the souls that came into the kingdom because you gave, it's for your account. When you give to the body of Christ, when you give to your church, when you give to the ministry, you're adding to your crown. And when God calls the role, Glory to God. The number of souls that were coming to the king. God, I didn't save all these people. Yes, you did. You gave. You got involved in kingdom business. Glory to God. Come on and stand to your feet if you're ready to give. Hallelujah. So that they may take hold of that which is truly life. And the life we're talking about is the life eternal. You are connected to your seed. You're connected to your finances. You're connected to your resources. Glory to God. So if you're texting to give, it's 844-970-4996. Or if you're giving cash app for the ministry, it's dollar sign H-C-M-I-L-I-F-E. Amen? Praise God. Come on, lift your offering or your, your giving towards, towards heaven. Father, I pray over the people of God, those who are giving today, that Lord God, that you would bless them as they come in and bless them as they go out. That Lord God, they lay hold to the seed that's in their hand. That, Father God, that's being sown in good ground, God. And, Father, I pray, Father, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing. That they will not have room enough to receive. I thank you, Lord God, that they are a cheerful giver. They're good to give into the kingdom. That they are doing kingdom business. And for that, we give you praise, Lord God. And I speak over their seed and I command it to go and to grow and to multiply and return. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on and water your seat by giving God some praise and thank
Hello, Pastors David and Carol Nelson yes. and Harvest Christian Ministries International. We want to wish you all a happy church anniversary. Two years. Two years of ministry. Absolutely. And so we thank God and we appreciate you. We are Pastors Ray and Sharon McQueen of Family Life Christian Church in Lynchburg, Virginia. And again, we want to wish you all a happy church anniversary. Amen. And we declare over your lives that the best yes. is yes. yet. To come. come. God bless God you bless all you. and happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. Happy anniversary, Pastor Dave and Carol. Happy anniversary, <laughs> Harvest Christian Ministry International. Okay. We are so excited to be able to celebrate your second Ooh. anniversary with you. Congratulations. Congratulations. And you know, I need we need to celebrate big time. Yes. Because you know what? It messes the devil up oh, when we yeah. celebrate church anniversary. Yes because he didn't think we would have anything to celebrate. He didn't even think that we'd be here. He didn't think that we would have anything to thank God for or to praise God for. But here we are Woo. thanking him and praising yes. him for another year of victory, Glory another year God. of success, Glory another year of never enough. Yes. Ooh, Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's celebrate it to the max. Yes, hey, celebrate it good. Amen. We love you guys. Yes, we so love you. So very much. Amen. Hello, how are you today? This is Pastors Greg and Karen Vinson. We're the pastors of Victory Christian Ministries International in Bowie, Maryland. And we just wanted to take time out to celebrate with you this morning. Pastors David and Carol Nelson and the entire Harvest Christian Ministries International Church. We just wanted to say how happy we are, how excited we are for what God is doing at your location. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, family, Harvard Christian Ministry. Pastor David and Carol, we love you so much. We're so proud of you. We're so excited about what God is doing in your life. We know that the best is yet to come, abundance and overflow. Congratulations. Yes. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Stay connected. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Celebrate. Woo! Greetings, Pastor Dave and Pastor Carol and all of Harvest Christian Ministries International. We are so excited to be joining you guys for your two-year anniversary. God is so awesome. He is so amazing. And we are standing with you guys and we are believing God just as the name of your church implies for the harvest because we know that the best is yet to come because we know you guys are doing some amazing things over in Davenport, Florida. So again, we're excited for you. Happy two-year anniversary. And Brother Pastor Dave, we want to say to you, we want to say congratulations. Thank you for following the leadership of God to lead you to Davenport. It was nobody but God. And God's grace and mercy is with you. And the best is yet to come. Pastor Dave and Pastor Kara, God bless you all. We love you. We love you. And I'm so excited for them. Um, thank God for meeting them uh, a few years ago. I think it's been almost, what, two years now that we've been knowing the Nelsons. And, and we've been, they've been partnering up. And we, we made a pact almost 12 months ago. Uh, when we was at uh, the Chapman's uh, first anniversary as well. That we were going to be help us one another. Uh, one of the things that my wife loves and always say is uh, we don't want to do ministry alone. And a lot of times pastors can be 
all rangers where we, you know, and sometimes it's for our own fault because you know we have people around us, but we, we're afraid to go and say, hey, I need help. Amen. Amen. I need somebody to talk to. But I thank God for Pastor uh, David and Pastor Kirk. But Pastor David, and, you know, I found a friend. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you can't call everybody a friend, but I, I found a friend in Pastor David, and he came back at the right time. And every now and then I get a text from him and I hear this say, you know, man of God, keep on doing what you're doing. I hear you. Uh, I heard your message. And, and then one thing, you know, is there's something about being nice. Now, we would have never not made it here today. You know, uh, a lot of times it's, and, and this is just a testament of how much we love the Nelsons uh, and we want them to succeed. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. I tell you, congratulations for making two years. Yeah. Um, every year in ministry is worth celebrating. Um, and so we just want to congratulate you guys. Some pastors have given up in the first six months. Some have given up in the first three months during the, during the, during the um, pandemic. And you guys keep forging on. And so we just want to um, salute you and tell you job well done for not giving up. Um, and having souls on your mind, Amen. souls on your heart, and doing the kingdom work. There's a scripture in the Bible. It says, Be ye strong, therefore let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So continue to do the work of the kingdom of God. Amen. It shall be rewarded. Amen. In Jesus' name, we love you. We love you. We appreciate the work that you all do. And keep on doing it. Your work shall be rewarded. God bless you all. I was, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Have a celebration on this morning. Glory. I'm just going to read um, this through the It starts off with, um, it says, if you obey the Lord your God and faithful, keep all his commands that I am giving you today, he will make you greater than yeah. any other nation on earth. Oh, Hallelujah. Here's the key. Obey the Lord your God, and yes. all these blessings will be yours. So we speak the blessings of God over this this man and woman of God, and we're believing that Deuteronomy lives, breathes, speaks, yes. and dwells inside of you. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to get a little bit more personal. We met the we met the emails since probably five years ago, and we are both you know sons and daughters of Victory Christian Ministries International under the Brazeltons, and and we met them, and they were such beautiful people. I remember our first dinner. It was that there they had a, a, a condo here, a vacation condo, and we sat around. I don't pass the Carol cook. I don't eat meat, so she made sure I had something to eat. And we just sat around and talked and sung worship together and just enjoyed the fellowship. And you know, that's very rare that you can meet someone and immediately your spirits connect. And it's such a blessing to have that. So you have a magnificent man and woman of God. Who, who are my uh, Harvest Christian Ministry members here? <laughs> This is this is year two, and they were celebrating year one with us one last year. And a pandemic is and trying to start a ministry in the middle of a pandemic is no fun. I'll just tell you right there, it's very hard to get people to commit. But those of you that are members here, dig in, trust God, do everything you can. Bless your man and woman of God. Uphold them on their left and their right. Whatever they need, don't don't think about yourself. Think about what they need to make sure. Ministry goes forth in this season in Davenport. God planted them here. And he's planted you here so that you can be a help to them. So do all that you can 
Spare nothing in, when it comes in regards to them, because I promise you, you will reap a harvest. You will reap a harvest if you spare nothing. And we just love you, Pastor David and Pastor Carol. We just keep on keeping on. Be obedient to God, whatever he tells you to do. And I, we look forward to celebrating with you on year three. <laughs> voice that you will hear, and I actually uh, direct your attention to the screens, will be that of our mom and our dad, Apostles Tony and Cynthia Grafton, Victory Christian Ministries International. Amen. Can you just stand on your feet, just give God the glory, put your hands together. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor David and Carol Nelson. We love you guys so, so very much. Happy anniversary. I am super excited to come to you guys and to share with you this morning. Listen, Pastor Tony sends his love. Something came up. You just got me this morning, but I guarantee the word of God will bless your life. Listen, Carol, David, we love you guys so very much, and we're so excited about what God is doing in your life. The faith that it took for you guys to move to Florida and to start a work. We know the hand of God is on your life. We're excited with you. We stand with you. We release our faith with you. And I believe that God's going to do some amazing things in your life. Listen, hold on to what God has promised you. The best is still yet to come. So congratulations to you. Happy anniversary. We love you so, so very much. Now, let's get into the word of God. I'm excited about it this morning. So today, I want to talk to you about courageous faith. And you know, if, it, if there ever was a day that we need to live in and walk in faith, today is that day. I mean, we are a people of God. The just shall live by faith. We live and walk and move by our faith. But I, I want to add this, this piece of this courageous faith because it causes us gives us an endurance unlike we've ever experienced before. And this courageous faith moves into our lives because mostly because of adversity or difficulty or things that come our way that we sometimes just don't know what to do or even how to handle what's happening. But when we maintain courageous faith, we're able to overcome the circumstances of life. Courageous faith gives birth to the supernatural. It gives birth to signs and wonders and miracles. It makes the impossible become possible when you act in courageous faith. I don't know about you. That's good news. It makes the impossible possible in your life. And so if you're dealing with some impossibilities or things look like they're impossible, things are about to change in your life because of this courageous faith that I believe that will be developed and it will grow and mature on the inside of you. Yes, in a moment, just by the preached word of God, things are about to change for you. And so the Bible tells us in in all of our difficulties, all of our adversities, we must have courage. You know, we're facing things in this generation that they have never faced before. We have more challenges than we've ever had before. But God has equipped us and made us ready to overcome and to be able to face the challenges that we have. And it is through our faith, through this courageous faith. James put it this way. Come on. Open your Bibles, your tablets, your phone, something, jot down, make some notes, write out the scriptures. You know, you got to meditate on the word of God for it to become effective in your life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So put it on your eye gate, put it in your ear gate, put it in your heart and allow it to change your life. James chapter 1, verse 12 in the Passion Translation says this. He says, if, you, if your faith remains strong, even while surrounded by life difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. Listen, if your faith remains strong, if you have courageous faith, and even when you're surrounded by difficulties, and that is the time where you really have to release this courageous faith in the midst of difficulties, if you maintain your faith in God, you will continue to receive and experience the untold blessings of God. 
God. What is that saying? There are some blessings that have not been told yet. There's a power of God on the inside of you that hasn't been seen yet, but God wants the world to see it. And so there's some untold blessings. You know, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says there, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard. It has not entered your heart the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But God wants to reveal those things to you by his spirit. And the way that you will experience these things is that you stand strong in your faith in God. He goes on to say in James 1 and 12, true happiness comes when you pass the test with faith. Listen, everybody goes through a testing season of their lives where your faith is tested. But he says you will experience true happiness when you pass the test and receive. You're going to receive the victorious crown of life. Um, that God has promised to those that love him, all the lovers of God. Do I have any lovers of God out there? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you all love God. So God had some true happiness that is available to you when you pass the test. Look at your neighbor and say, pass the test. Come on, talk to your other neighbor, say, pass the test. <laughs> And so every one of us will experience a testing season in our lives when adversity comes our way and difficulties comes our way. But if you stand strong, you're going to experience the untold blessings of God. In Proverbs 24 and 10, in the King James Version, it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So if you faint when adversity comes, your strength is small. And so there's some things that got to trigger and cause the strength of God on the inside of you to rise to the occasion to cause you to overcome. The Passion Translation says it this way. If you faint under pressure, you have need of courage. Hallelujah. And so if you faint when you're under pressure or un, um, difficulties come your way or adversity comes your way, you have need of courage. Listen, when you think about it, what happens when a person faints? You know, you ever seen a person faint before? Maybe you fainted before in a physical sense. You know, uh, but God doesn't want you to faint in your mind concerning the word of God. Because, you know, when you faint, you lose consciousness. You lose consciousness of the word of God, his promises and what he said to you. You lose consciousness of who you are, who God said you are and who he's made you to be. And God forbid you will lose consciousness of who God is in your life. Listen, God is bigger than any circumstances you face. He's bigger than any difficulty that you have faced. He's bigger than a pandemic. He's bigger than a lack of anything in your life. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than any sickness or disease. You cannot lose consciousness consciousness of who your God is. If you faint under pressure, you have need of courage. And so here's the key to this is don't faint. Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for you will reap in due season what happens if you faint not. Tell your neighbor, said, don't faint on me now. Hallelujah. It is not a time for us to faint. We have got to push and move forward into what God has for us in this season. Listen, you're just getting started in ministry. I don't know how many years it's been. It could have been 10 years, two years. It doesn't matter how many years it's been. We are just getting started. And if you have not already noticed, there is a shift that is taking place in the body of Christ, a shift that is taking place in the world. And God is looking looking for a people that will stand on the word of God and to believe what God has said for them to come to pass in your life. In Hebrews 10, 35, you're familiar with it. It says, cast not away your confidence, which have a great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And so you and I've got to maintain our confidence in God, maintain your courage in God, maintain the word of God in your life. Don't faint when you face adversity. You just now have need of courage. The Passion Translation in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36 says it this way. So don't lose your bold, courageous faith for you are destined for a great reward. Hallelujah. Somebody said, my future is bright. 
Listen, you are destined for a great reward. You cannot afford to lose your confidence or to lose heart or to lose your bold, courageous faith for you are destined for a great reward. It says you, you need the strength of endurance to reveal the poetry of God's will, and then you will receive the promise in full. So God has a promise for every single one of us that he wants you to experience the full promises of God, that there be nothing lacking, nothing missing in your life, that everything that God has promised you, think about it when you started in ministry. Think about it when you got born again and the promises that God revealed to you through revelation of what you would do and what you would experience in the things of God. So God is telling you to hold on to that promise. Don't lose your your bold, courageous faith, for you are destined to receive what God has promised you to the full. Hallelujah. And so you have need of a courageous faith. What does it mean to have courage? Courage is a quality of mind or your spirit that will enable you to face difficulty. It will enable you to face danger or pain without being fearful. Fear would rob you of the faith of God. But when you have courage, it will cause you to face challenges without fear. It means to be brave. Hallelujah. So no matter what the circumstances are, you are brave. You are standing on the promise that God has made you. It also means to act in accordance to what you believe in spite of criticism in spite of your circumstances. Courage is a choice. It's not a feeling. It's a choice that you make. In spite of my circumstances, in spite of the criticism, there may be people around you that don't believe like you believe. But in spite of all of that, I'm going to stand on the promises of God and I'm going to act out what I believe. Now, the opposite of courage would be discouraged. Now, you cannot allow frustration or discouragement to stop you from receiving what God has for you in this season of your life. Discouragement only comes to take away your courage. And the only way that it can take away your courage is through negative thinking, negative feelings, negative talking, or negative circumstances. All of these things are coming just to give you or to make you discouraged. But understand, if discouragement comes, it's only coming to take away the courage that God has placed on the inside of you. Remember, God has put the faith of God on the inside of you. He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. And so discouragement comes to change that, to take that away from you. But if you maintain your courage, you are destined for a great reward. You are destined to receive the promises of God in full. Hallelujah. Listen, Psalms 27, verse 14 in the Passion Translation says this. It says, here's what I've learned through it all. And I don't know about you, Pastor Tony and I have been in ministry quite some time. Uh, I think it's 38 years this year we've been in ministry. And it says, here's what I've learned. And I, this could be my testimony. I pray that it be your testimony. Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. Listen, whatever you do, you just keep waiting on the Lord God. God will never disappoint you. Don't you lose hope. Don't you lose heart. Don't be impatient. God's promises will manifest in your life. He's looking for somebody that will simply believe what he said till they see what they, he said come to pass. And sometimes, you know, when it comes to releasing faith and having courage, you may need to encourage yourself. There may not be anybody or like I said before, anybody that will believe what you say. I know, you know, when Pastor Tony and I were preparing to make moves in our lives based on promises that God has made us. And, you know, we would share with people or we would have other people to join in with us in the adventure that God has for us and that everybody believed like we believe. As a matter of fact, there were times when people tried to talk us out of the promises of God. Well, maybe you don't need that building or maybe you don't need to start another location or maybe we should just wait and not do this or not do that. Or how do you know we don't have enough money? We don't 
have enough people. And so they're people that mean well, but it's against the promises of God. It's against what God has said. Listen, you got to encourage yourself sometimes in the Lord your God. You remember the story in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and David and his men, they come from being sent home from a battle with the Philistines. And when they get home, they see the city is burnt down with fire. And David and his men, they see that all of their homes are burnt down, their wives and their children were taken away captive. All of their goods were taken away. And the Bible said, and the men began to weep and to cry till they couldn't weep and cry no more. You ever been to that place? And I know you have. Everybody has. You get to a place where you cried and you couldn't cry anymore and just no more tears, but yet the sorrow was overwhelming. And that's where they found themselves in. And the Bible said, and David was greatly distressed. I mean, he was over the top distressed, not only because he lost his his wife and his goods and his stuff, the people that were with him blamed him for it and they wanted to kill him. Can you imagine people that you've been there? I know as pastors, you know, you know, we all been there. You help people and you help them. You do everything you can for them. And all they want to do is talk about you. All they want to do is kill you, disrupt, you know, what God is doing in your life. And, and David got so overwhelmed with the problems of his life, he was greatly distressed stressed as them all. But what David did is what you and I have to continue to do. David called for the priest. He called for the ephod and he inquired of the Lord. Sometimes you got to get away with God yourself and you got to question and you got to ask God to the things that you need to do in the circumstances that you are facing in your life. And David inquired of the Lord God, shall I pursue? Will I overtake them? And David began to encourage himself in the Lord, his God. And sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You know, when I think about it, and I can imagine what did David do to encourage himself? He's got the ephod and he's got an audience with God and he begins to encourage himself. He's thinking about the circumstances that he is presently in. We're in a pandemic. People aren't coming to church. Things are happening. There are people that are going through. Finances are not what they should be. People are not in place. Things are not happening. And David began to think about his circumstances, but then he encourages himself. He said, oh, yeah, I've been in this place before. I've been in a place where the enemy came against me in a form of a bear. He came against me in a form of a lion. He came against me in a form of a giant. And so he realized that in each one of those cases, he said, I slew a giant. I slew a bear. And that uncircumcised Philistine was no match for my God. And so this present circumstance will not overcome me. God, shall I pursue? Will I overtake? And God said, David, pursue you will overtake and without fail, you will recover all. Hallelujah. This is a season of your life where you will begin to recover the promises of God. You'll re begin to recover everything that God says belong to you. The promise that he's made to you when you stepped out on faith to do what God is calling you to do in this season. Today is your day to receive from God. He says you will without fail recover all. I like the way David put it in Psalm 119, verse 50 to 52 in the Passion Translation. He says, in all of my affliction, I find great comfort in your promises for I have kept for they have kept me alive. I mean, if it wasn't for the goodness of God, if it wasn't for what God has promised, if it wasn't for what God has done, I don't know what I would do. But in my affliction, I find great comfort in your promises. No matter how bitterly the proud markers speak against me, I refuse to budge from your precepts. Your revelation light is eternal. I am encouraged every time I think about your truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And I am encouraged every time I think about the goodness of God, every time I think about how he had brought me from where I was to where I am now. When I think about the promises that God has made, he said, I am encouraged every time I think about his truth. 
you ought to be thinking about the goodness of God right now in your life. And so, you know, David had to encourage himself in the Lord, your, his God. And you have to encourage yourself in the Lord, your God. You know, Paul wrote to Timothy and he was trying to encourage Timothy. Timothy was facing challenges as a young preacher and he was going through some things and Paul began to remind him of the promises that God had made to him. He reminded him of the courageous faith that was inside of him as well. In um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, and he says, verse 5, I'm sorry, he says, When I call to remembrance, this is Paul writing to Timothy, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which was dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it is inside of you also. He said that faith that was in your mother and, and that was in your grandmother, I'm persuaded that it's on the inside of you. Listen, there is a faith of God that is on the inside of you that God God wants to stir up. And so he said to them in verse six, therefore, I remind you, stir up the gifts of God that is within you. Remember the faith of God that he's placed on the inside of you. Remember the impartation when you were in called into ministry. Remember the anointing that came on your life when God called you to pastor. Remember the anointing of God that came on your life when God called you to that place of worship. Remember that anointing. Now stir up the gift of God that is on the inside of you. Stir yourself up in action. Faith without work faith without courageous faith without being courageous is dead notice what happens when when you, you stand on the promises of God God begin to manifest in your life in Isaiah chapter 41 God is speaking uh, to Isaiah and reminding him of God's promise to him and to be encouraged so that they Isaiah can see the prophecies that God was saying come to pass. And so in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, he says, fear not, for I am with you. And God is always letting us know that he is with us. He said, be not dismayed or don't be discouraged, for I am your God. He said, I will strengthen you. You know, when you get discouraged, you lose heart, you lose strength, and it, sometimes it affects you physically. But God says, don't be discouraged. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Do you see all the I wills of God? I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. I will be there for you. I will not leave you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so don't, verse, the New Living Translation said it this way, don't be afraid, I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my victorious right hand. And the hand of God is on your life, it's on your ministry, it's on the call of God for your life. Listen, if God be for you, tell me who can be against you? And, you know, I believe this is what God's, when God's anointing came on his life for, ser for the service of God, he was calling him to pastor these millions of people and, and to bring the people of God out of Egypt into the promised land. And so God speaks to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6, and he says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear or be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you and he will not forsake you. Are we hearing that again? That God is with you. And when you know the hand of God is on your life, there's literally nothing that you cannot accomplish. Remember, the impossible becomes possible because God's hand is on your life. And so God is saying, do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged. I am with you. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will see to it that the promises of God will come to pass in your life. So God is speaking to the children of Israel through Moses. 
But then Moses begins to commission the children of Israel to let them know that he will not take them into the promised land that God had commissioned Joshua to be in his stead to take the children of Israel into the promised land. And so God speaks to Joshua, Joshua chapter one. God comes to him and he said, listen, Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead, but it's time for you to move forward and to bring the children of Israel into the promised land. In other words, stop looking back. Your future is before you. Stop looking back how things were before, before the pandemic and before all this stuff happened, before that happened, before this happened. He says, no, your future is before you. And he says to him in verse six, he said, be strong. And of good courage, for unto you and this people shall thou divide for an inheritance of the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Now he's saying you got to have good courage and you got to be very courageous in order for you to obtain what I declared already belongs to you. And don't be afraid of the people that are before you. I've already dealt with that. You just be strong and move forward. He said, for you have to observe to do according to all that the law has given to you by Moses, my servant, which he commanded you, don't turn to the right or to the left hand, that you may prosper wherever you go. And you know, he says to them, and this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate, or I like to say, you shall medicate on it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written therein, then you will make your way prosperous. And listen to me, you will have guaranteed good success. If you maintain your courage, you be of good courage, you be very courageous. He said, you will have good success. What am I meditating on? What is my focus? You got to meditate, medicate on the word of God. Let it get on the inside of you. Let the word become medicine and change your circumstances in your life. And he says, have not, verse nine, have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. So courage is not an option. He said, I've commanded you to have good courage. Be strong, be of good courage. He says, don't be afraid, neither be dismayed or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So God is always with you with every, wherever you go. And God knows that in order for you to obtain what God has given to you, he has to put the word of God on the inside of you. And he will always put that same word that he's put on the inside of you for the people of God that are connected to you, that are with you. Because it takes a community of people to see the promises of God come to pass in your life. You know, even in David's time, again, in 1 Chronicles 28, David begins to prepare his son Solomon to receive the promise of God. And, and he had to know that it took courage to do so, to build the house of God, to maintain the, the promises that God has made to him. He would have a son that would sit on the throne of David forever. In verse 28, First Chronicles 28, verse 20, he says, And David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor be discouraged or dismayed for the Lord your God, my God will be with you. Hallelujah. And he will not leave you nor forsake you until he finish all the work for the service of the house of God. God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will finish what he started. What he started in you, what he said in you from the very beginning, God will finish it. He just needs you to be strong, be courageous. Don't lose heart. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your courageous faith. You got to stand on what God has promised you and you will see what God has said come to pass in your life. Look with me in Proverbs. Chapter one, verse 33 in the Passion Translation says, but the one who always listens to me will live undisturbed, even in heavenly peace, free, free from fear, confident and courageous. You will rest unafraid 
and sheltered from the storms of life. So no matter what storm you come to, you know that God has your back, that God has you. When you listen to him, you will have this undisturbed peace that comes in your life no matter what circumstances, what adversity comes your way, the peace of God is able to keep you, is keeping your heart and your mind in perfect peace, no matter the circumstances. And so, you know, every again, everybody faces challenges. And so you've got to look at the challenges in light of how God sees them. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 17 and 18, in the easy reading version, it says, we have small troubles for a while, but these troubles are helping us to gain an eternal glory. The eternal, that eternal glory is much greater than our problems. There's a manifestations of God's presence in your life. Remember, he'll never leave you. He won't forsake you. He'll always be with you. And so any trouble that you are experiencing, he said they're only for a while, but they're helping you. They're helping us gain an eternal glory, uh, that glory that is much greater than any trouble we we'll ever face. And so we think about what we cannot see and not what we see. What we see lasts only a short time, but what we cannot see will last forever. And what he's saying is that trouble won't last always. The difficulties won't last always. The circumstances won't last always. The adversity won't last always. God wants us to see things from his perspective. The Passion Translation, same verses of scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, it says we view our slight, short-lived troubles in light of eternity. In other words, we look at it from God's lenses, what God has to say about it. And we see our difficulties as substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory far beyond all comparisons. Why? Because we don't focus our attention on what we can see, but what we cannot see. Because what we can see is temporary, but what we cannot see, it is eternal. And so in order for us to cause these troubles to become substance for us, we got to view it in light of how God sees it. And we got to look at it from God's perspective perspective because God has a plan for every adversity that comes your way. As a matter of fact, he says in Psalms 34 that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Somebody said the Lord will deliver me out of every adversity. Hallelujah. That's good news. I don't know about you, but that's good news that God will deliver us out of every adversity. John 16, 33 in the Passion Translation, Jesus says, and everything I've taught you is so that you will have peace in me or that the peace in me will be in you and you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. So God wants us to put our rest in him. Don't be overcome by the cares of this world. Put your rest in God. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows. But you must be courageous for I have conquered the world. And so because he has conquered the world, you and I can overcome and conquer whatever the world throws at us. And first Five, four, seven, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our courageous faith in God will cause us to overcome every circumstance, every challenge that we face. It takes courage to have what God says belong to you. And so you can't cast away your confidence or your courageous faith. Remember, we have need of endurance to stand, be constant and consistent, standing on the word of God until you see what God has said to you to come to pass in your life. And as a result of that, you're going to see God do some amazing things in your life. Listen, Hebrews, last verses of scripture that I will leave you today. And he says to let us hold fast. Hebrews 10, 23, hold fast to your profession of your faith without wavering. For he is faithful 
that has promised. God is faithful. He will fulfill every promise that he has made to you. But he's wanting you to be faithful to God. Stand courageous on the promises of God. Don't allow the circumstances to change your position or to change what God has said to you. Maintain your faith in God. Hold fast to your profession of your faith or your confession of your faith. Let your faith become your profession. Let your confession of your faith become your profession, that this is what you do. This is how you live. I live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. I believe every word that God has spoken. I will not falter. I will not faint. I will not cave in. I will be entwined as one with God. And the very poetry of God's will for my life will be seen in my life. So I don't give up. I don't cave in. I don't quit. I don't lose hope. I will see God move move in my life. I will wait on the Lord and I will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I pray that I've said something of God by his spirit has said something that resonate with inside of you to know that God's promises are true and that you will see God move in your life. Listen, if you faint it, it's time to get up pick it back up, pick up the promises, those things that you wrote down when God spoke to you, bring it out, put it out, put it in your mouth, put it in your eye gate, put it in your ear, hear what God is saying to you. And I'm telling you, we're about to see a great move of God in your life like never before. The few years before this was great, but the best is yet to come. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I give you praise, Lord Jesus, for the word of God, your word that's able to change our present circumstances. God, give us lenses, eyes to see like you. Give us ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour that we're living in. Give us the heart to understand. God, whoever and that is listening under the sound of my voice, if there's been some adversity, some difficulty, some circumstance in their lives that are adverse to what you have said, God, we rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you in Jesus' name. Father, we stand courageously on the word of God and every promise that you have made us, we declare it is so. So God, we declare we are the healed. We are the blessed. We are the prosperous. We are the overcomers. Lord God. We are a people of courageous faith. And God, we believe we receive what the finished work of Jesus Christ has provided for all of us. And our lives will never be the same as a result of it. And we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on with me. Come on, give your God some praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. There is victory in your praise. This kind of praise has the ability to shut Satan's mouth. Come on, stand to your feet. Give your God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you so much again for allowing me to come and to share with you and the whole family of God. I love you so much. Pastor Toyn, I love you so much. Have a blessed, blessed day. Everyone, I don't care who you are, I don't care what space you like you have, everyone encounters something to where they have to be built up, to where they can't try to do this thing on their own. Because you know what will happen, right? The enemy will attack you in ways that you didn't even know about because you thought you had it together. God is sending people around you. He's sending the word. He's allowing you to be uplifted, to be motivated, to be encouraged, so that when things do come on, you know, oh, I got this. I heard that before. I've been here before. This is what you need to learn for yourself because you're not going to always be in our presence. You're not going to always hear word like this. So when you are out there and things are attacking you, the enemy is busy and he's doing his job 24-7. So when he does come and attack you, you've got to have enough word built up within you that you can find, no, I've been here before. I've seen this before. That's having your story. Having your bow, having it stored up. With the word of God, with some praise, with some, some scripture. Now, it doesn't have to be Genesis to Revelation, but it's got to be one of those some, somewhere up in there that you can latch on to it. I'm, this is so serious. you got to be able to latch on to a piece of word. A piece of word. Not the whole Bible. You can try to get the whole Bible and just get yourself confused. 
You mess around and get messed up trying to think you know everything from Genesis to Revelation, but get yourself a good piece of work. Hallelujah. Whatever's going on in your life, a good piece of word and chew on that thing. Meditate on that thing. She just said it. Meditate on it. Get it in your heart. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're here today and you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, is it not what mama had, not what daddy had, not what auntie had, I'm talking about, if you yourself have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you just slip your hand? Glory to God. Even those that are viewing online, if you just slip your hands, if you need to rededicate your life, give your life back up to God, would you just lift your hands? Yes. You know, we've been in this pandemic and we're not, some of us are not as close to God as we used to be. You know, we can go to the movie theaters, we can go to the supermarket, we can go to all these places, but church is the last place we end up. But don't think that God didn't know. So if that's you today, and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to rededicate your life, will you say this simple prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I'm a, I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I, be saved. I, believe, I believe that you sent Jesus, that you sent Jesus to, the earth to the earth to die for my sins. Die for my sins. I, confess I confess with my mouth, with my mouth the, Lord Jesus. the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart, in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, from the dead on the third day, on, third day. on my, behalf, my behalf, and is seated at the Father, at the, at the right hand of the Father. The right Father, I want to live this life that you commanded me on your terms. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for remembering me. And I give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. Glory to God. You know, out of the ordinances of the church, you know, communion is vitally important. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, the scripture says that he took bread. medication. You can take him. He says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. You can take it three times a day. You need medication. Take the word of God. Take the communion. If you need your body healed, take your communion. It is so vitally important that we know the tools that we have as born again believers. It is not hocus pocus. No, this is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Honor him. It says in the same like manner, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Unless there's a shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Jesus shed his blood. And his blood, it stains glory to God. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. This is a commandment. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death 
until he comes. Now before you take this, if there's anything in your heart or anything on your mind that you want to have settled, this is the time. Yeah. Lose that thing. Yes. Bring it to your remembrance right now. Yes. Right now. Because God is able. <laughs> you talk about setting free. Yes, setting free. God is able to set you free and deliver you from whatever. Yes. You're taking the communion. You're about to drink what has set people free. Yes. So as we do this, now drink. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want you just to begin to think about his goodness. Some of us need to be set free from some things, delivered from some things. Some of you are going through some, some challenges right now in your health. I want to lift your hand before the Lord. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for the people of God. We thank you, Lord, for allowing me to get here safely. We pray for traveling mercies, Lord, that return to their homes respectfully. We pray, Father, for the week that's coming, that, Lord God, we declare the blessing of their lives, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father, that you will restore them in their health, their wealth, their soundness, and their peace, and everything that pertains to them, Lord Father. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for Harvest Christian Ministries International, that, Lord God, that we are placed here in Davenport, Florida, Lord God, that we may be able to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For that, we give you praise and much thanksgiving. And we pronounce the blessing your life over your life to go and grow in the name of the Lord Jesus. We, we pray this right now. Beloved, we worship of all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers in Jesus' name. And all the church says amen. Amen. Amen and amen.